from the land of sky blue waters, welcome to the Soda Pod. Isha Jerome here alongside my good pal Joe, as well as Seth Topol today. And I thank you, all of you, for joining wherever and whenever you are listening. We ain't gonna lollygag. We ain't gonna rag the puck. We're gonna dive right here into the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to everybody who is subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you're listening to this via podcast form, again, if you want the full experience of some of these segments that you hear in this podcast, jump over to YouTube, check us out at the Soda Pod as we post the full videos of these podcasts every single Monday. That is right, the Soda Pod. And we're starting to post the full videos to other podcasts on our channel as well. Full episodes of Fellowship of the Rink, full live streams of Judd's Buds, and now every Monday you can get the full episode of the Soda Pod. And you guys are seemingly like it. Our last video had the most views on any of them. And since we've started this quote-unquote series on YouTube, since we've started posting the full Soda Pod episodes, I've heard nothing but good things from you guys. So we're going to keep posting it. We're going to keep going down this route. We're going to start off the show with another Hoppy Hour segment. We're diving into... The THC Seltzers for this one, so it's going to get a little crazy. Right after that, we're bringing on Seth Topol for another Minnesota Wild and NHL segment on this show. And in that segment, we'll talk about all things Murat Huznadinov, an update on the Erickson Eck injury, our thoughts from the games this last weekend, and a few interesting stories in the National Hockey League. And, oh my God, Seth just... The light bulb went off. Let's just say to to tease that segment. Seth brought something to my attention that I didn't even think of that. I doubt any of you even were thinking of in regards to Mark Andre flurry. It got me excited to say the least. Before we jump into the hoppy hour, I just want to give a big shout out to our friends at Northland Vodka. That is right, Northland Vodka, a local company. Shout out to Mark Parrish and the team there. An awesome team, great people, and an amazing product. If you haven't tried Northland Vodka, it is the best damn vodka on the planet. If it's not on your local shelf, ask your liquor store when they're getting Northland today and when they can get that amazing product on the shelf. And a percentage of all sales go back into the community, go back into local hockey. So it's a win-win, ladies and gentlemen. Go get you some Northland today. Northland Vodka, a proud partner of the Soda Pod. Without further ado, let's jump into the hoppy hour, the THC Seltzer edition. First, I'd like to propose a toast to UMD goaltender Alex Stalak. To Stalak! To Stalak! I love that stuff. Been drinking it for years. You know, I, I heard they recently decided to add more hops. You're all hopped out. What's up, everybody? Back for another hoppy hour here on the Soda Pod, and we have a special one here today. We got Joe. You guys, Joe. you guys recognize him from a few of our segments before. By the way, I hit 9,000 subscribers, so I hope uh, hope this guy doesn't push me off the roof. 6,000 subscribers. I'll triple the time, and we'll do it on the roof. I'll show all the roof as I come over here to tell you guys. 10,000 subscribers, and I'll push him off the roof. 
Better believe me, I'll do it. 10,000, I'll push them off the roof. Joe! But anyways, we're here trying something different here today. I know you guys saw our vlog from Lupulin Brewing at Big Beer Week. They hooked us up with a care package, which included a few of the Smazies. That's right, they're THC seltzers. So what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna try two of them, and then we're gonna <laughs> then we're gonna come back in about an hour, hour and a half, if we're not asleep. And we're gonna see uh, see how we feel after that, Joe. So first of all, which uh, which is the first one that we're trying here? This is Pinky. We'll call it Pinky. Pinkity <laughs> this, Drinkity. This is the pineapple watermelon. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. It's watermelon. It's not a lemonade again, non-alcoholic THC seltzer. I love how Lupulin used their logo in with kind of like a pot leaf to make it a little bit more 420 culture friendly. And funny enough, it actually got shadow banned on Instagram. So if they post any of these cans on Instagram, they have to blur out the freaking Smazy logo. So this one is 10 milligrams of THC, three servings, and they have it marked here with their, their servings on the can. So we're gonna start off with that one. And the second one that we're gonna try is one that I've had before. This is a brand new flavor, but this one is the Smazy Cherry Lime Blue Raspberry. Also 10 milligrams per three servings. I'm not the biggest seltzer guy, Joe, but I like my THC, as you know. And I know you've dabbled in some of the THC seltzers before, See, too. Isha, I was actually just about to say, I'm not a big THC guy, but I've drank my fair share amount of seltzers. <laughs> so I feel like we're coming together here. All right, well. Seltzer with THC. <laughs> well, that's why I wanted Joe on this vlog. We'll, uh, we'll share half of these each, but uh, cheers, buddy. Cheers. All right, what are you getting from that one? I'm getting a good flavor of lemonade. I can really taste okay. the lemonade. I can't remember what else is in there. Pineapple, watermelon. Yeah, not too, I mean, it's just, again, these seltzers, usually they're not sweet. And so you don't get like the same sweet kick you'd get from either just like a pineapple juice or a regular lemonade. And so that's actually why I kind of like them. They're less sweet, but you can definitely taste the notes of, of lemonade in there. Almost kind of like a watered down country time lemonade. But the flavor's good. It drinks good. I like it. Two thumbs up. It's not like drinking those like vodka drinks or those lemonade, simply lemonade drinks. It's like seltzers are very, a hint of whatever flavor is yep. in there. Yep, just crisp. I will say this one, a lot more sweet. You can taste more of the blue raspberry than any of the uh, cherry and lime. Like I said, I've had this one before. It's kind of a weird color, this one too. It almost looks like freaking water that you'd find in like a pool in India, but I mean, it's safe enough for me to drink. <laughs> we'll still drink it. <laughs> All right, let's do a little switcheroo. Swap. Yankee swap. Yankee swap. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wow. Yeah, you said this one is way more lemon and no like sweetness, where that one's way sweeter. This one has a lot more sweetness to it, yep. So this one has a lot more going on, whereas this one's more so just like lemonade, which is actually kind of yep. good. Oh, I just got the hint of that like weed flavor in, in this one as well. Yeah. Whereas that one didn't have any. Yeah, I was waiting for it in that one too and I never got it. But I, what's funny is like, I actually kind of got that weed flavor a, a tiny bit in this one. And maybe because that was my first one, like I just wasn't like as ready for it or like looking for it. But that one was the first sip that I felt like I got like a weed flavor to it. But no, this one definitely has a lot more action to it, a lot more... It just seems sweeter, but they're they're both delicious. They're both great. Which one would you recommend to a first time drinker of a THC seltzer or someone who, you know, dabbles in the THC products, but wants to get into seltzers versus smoking as smoking is bad for your lungs, ladies and gentlemen, this is the safer way to consume this and support your local breweries. You know what, Isha? I just think because of the, the more present flavor, this, this one is probably going to be the one that sticks out to people. Um, when you think about it, I mean, they're, they're both low calorie, but at the end of the day, you're not drinking a THC beverage, worried about your calories or anything like that. So just because of the little bit more prominent flavor, I think this one's going to reach out to people more, but 
I liked them both. I'm a big lemonade guy, so I actually kind of personally like the lemonade one more, but. For me, I like my lemonade as well, especially now that like the sun's out and it's getting a lot warmer, like sitting outside in the sun, drinking some lemonade, especially some THC lemonade. This is like my preferred style, but as far as like what I'll give props to Lupulin for is this one just more of like a complex drink. There's a lot of flavors going on and these things are cool in that you just said that in your second sip, you kind of get a, another one of the flavors, right? So like I first got the uh, like the blue raspberry on this. And like, yeah, my second go around, I'm starting to taste a little bit more of the lime. Now that could be because my, we're, you know, swapping between lemonade and stuff, but uh, there's a lot going on here. And I wasn't a fan of seltzers at all. And it's still not my preferred alcoholic beverage. Obviously these ones, <laughs> obviously these ones don't have alcohol in them, but uh, just the style of seltzer here, the way Lupulin does it, a lot more flavorful, even though they're light than honestly any other, any other seltzer that I've had, especially any other THC seltzer that I've had, I think. And that's not to say anything bad about our friends at Back Channel. Theirs are just a lot more thick and rich, whereas these ones are lighter and have a lot of flavor to them. So I would say for anybody who wants to dabble in these, anyone local to Minnesota here, out of these two, pick this one if you're starting out. But if you're a fan of lemonade, man, like you can't go wrong with that one as well. So can't go wrong with either. Cheers, Joe. Thanks for- Cheers. Sipping on some of these with me and guys, <laughs> since these are THC seltzers, we're gonna check back in in about an hour or so and we'll see how we're feeling before we wrap up this vlog. Sound good? Cheers. <laughs> a little something. Yeah. I told you. You keep smiling. <laughs> I just got, you kind of feel when your eyes droop a little bit. <laughs> schnozberries taste like schnozberries. The schnozberries taste like schnozberries. <laughs> <laughs> It works, guys. Go get you some of these today. Oh. Try it again, try it again, try it again. <laughs> One hour in. Feeling it a bit more. Definitely feeling, oh my God. Definitely feeling it now. You know when your eyes start drooping a bit, you start staring off thinking, what am I thinking about? Low dosage, so I don't think it's gonna get any crazier than this, but for the casual users, pace yourself. Start with the one serving, wait 45 minutes, an hour, then decide if you want more. But big shout out to our friends at Lupulin again for that amazing care package that they sent me home with. We have two more to review in a later episode. If you haven't already, go check out this vlog on the most recent Big Beer Week 2024, and also this one for a great podcast hit sitting down with some of the staff there. As always, smash that like button and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Before we jump into our hockey segment, ladies and gentlemen, bring on Seth Topol. I want to remind you guys to go subscribe to his channel on YouTube, Locked on Wild. I will be appearing on his channel every single Friday moving forward. We have a great collaboration now between the Soda Pod team and Locked on Wild, where Seth joins our show every Monday for the Soda Pod, and I join his show for every Friday drop. So if you can't get enough of us, well, now you got two ways to listen to Seth and I every single week so go show him some love as well and go show the sponsor of this segment seventh avenue pizza some love as well seventh avenue pizza is the greatest pizza on the planet dude and it's a frozen pizza no less none of that domino shit none of that papa john's <gasps> seventh avenue pizza is what you should be snacking on today 
a great local company, amazing people, and you can find them on the shelves of your local Hy-Vee, Kowalski's, Holiday Stations, Lunds and Byerly, and more. If you can't find them on your shelves, reach out to the folks at 7th Avenue Pizza. They're totally interactive on social media. Matt and the gang, they're on Twitter more than I am, ladies and gentlemen. So tag them at 7th Avenue Pizza. Ask them where you can find their product at a location near you. Let's try to get them on the shelves on every grocery store in every gas station here in Minnesota. They're also now available outside the state. Some places in Wisconsin, some places in Illinois as well. Happy to be part of the team, happy to watch them grow, and happy to divulge in the greatest pizza on the plate. I will never eat another pizza again, Domino's. Sorry, I was getting a little crazy there. Just My love for 7th Avenue Pizza trumps my hate for Domino's, I promise, guys. I promise, Matt. Anyways, go get you some 7th Avenue Pizza today. Proud partner of the Soda Pod. Without further ado, let's bring on Seth. All right, we are back for our Hockey Talk segment of this podcast with Seth Topol of Locked On Wild. Guys, don't forget to go subscribe to Locked On Wild on YouTube. And also check out the podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Every now Friday, I will be joining Seth on the show as well. YouTube podcast, go check that out. Seth, how's it going, buddy? Isha, what's happening, my man? We are just vibing, enjoying a uh, a beautiful Sunday here while we record. Just uh, just hanging out, just living life, just loving it. Man, it's gorgeous outside, eh? Yeah, it's a little on the chilly side, but sun's out. That can't hurt. Can't complain. Can't complain. What a crazy winter <laughs> that we've had here in Minnesota. Like I, I know a quote unquote winter. I know I don't have to tell all you guys listening, but like. As the resident Canadian here, Seth, I mean, th- this feels this feels closer to like Vancouver Island weather than it does Minnesota. Let's just say that I have worn shorts more times this winter than I have had to shovel off my car, bro. I had to force myself to wear a beanie, and usually it's like I'm 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 keeping myself warm like that. And I can't believe I just said beanie. <laughs> Fuck, I am turning American. <laughs> Dude, bro, whenever I think beanie, uh, <laughs> it's it's too, it's too, bro. Whenever I think beanie, I think those stupid propeller hats from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I don't know why. That's what we refer to. That's what we call beanies in Canada. <laughs> oh man. The, Anyways, the, 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 the exchange, the, the naming exchange is is something else. Oh my goodness, is it ever? Anyways, like, we're already the train is already off the track. Let's get into some uh, hockey talk here. Uh, let Let's just start with the the last two games. I know when I jumped on Locked On Wild going into the weekend, we were talking about all things Murat Huznadinov. We were talking about Brodeen's, or uh, sorry, not Brodeen. We're talking about X injury. Obviously, Erickson Eck, nothing serious. Thank God, doesn't need surgery. Won't be out long term, but he is going to be out for at least another week hopefully not too but that's potentially in the cards as well again dyer given that the wild need two points he's one of their best players if not the best player on the team this year you can 100 make an argument for that so there's definitely a hole in the lineup and uh despite that despite that Murat Nadinov, no points we might as well just send him back to Russia, right? So, <laughs> I yeah, I mean, at this point, you can't tell me that you're not getting more from Marcus Johansson than you're getting from Murat, who's Nadine. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, it sucks that the Eck injury is longer than we thought it would be. I mean, I was yeah. hoping it was just going to be like a game or two max. Now it might be, you know, four, potentially five, which again, that's horrendous for this team as they, they need him. On the positive side of things, and again, uh, like all jokes aside, yeah, Murat Kuznetsov who's doesn't have any points yet, but oh my god, dude, what a tremendous first game! Again, no scoring, but he did everything else that he was assigned to do. Like, tell us your thoughts and and explain to those who are just looking at the stats, who don't you know, who don't read into anything more, how important he was to the Anaheim Ducks win. Well, I think the thing that I liked most, Isha, about what we saw from Huznadinov was that he just like he just stepped in and he made plays. Like he didn't wait for his teammates to kind of guide him to where he needed to be. 
he just stepped up and he made plays, whether it be going uh, going to the corner to battle for a puck, winning faceoffs. He blocked four shots, which led the team against the Ducks. And so he just made winning plays. And that speed is just going to translate so well, I think. Like, he just he just looked the part. And I know in the game against St. Louis, he uh, he had, I think, 10 minutes of ice time. But you look at St. Louis, they've got uh, they've got solid center depth up and down the lineup. And you were trying to you were playing the first two lines, essentially double shifting to try to get back into that game. And so I don't look a ton into a dip in minutes from game one to game two for who's Nadinoff. Um, ultimately I would like to see him get an opportunity with some actual scorers to see what he can do from a playmaking standpoint, but it's hard not to be impressed with just the fact that we've talked about uh, a few guys in this lineup that are not giving you a ton for him to come in, in his NHL debut and make more of an impact than a few of the regulars in the lineup is impressive. Like he just, he just stepped in and he just, he just went and made plays. That's, that's really all you can ask for a rookie is to come in, make some plays and, uh, and try to help impact, uh, impact the outcome. Well, and furthermore, like you mentioned, blocking shots, that's huge for your first game as a rookie too. Like not even mid season, like you're in the fire right now towards the end of the season. You're already doing those things that coaches love from anybody in the lineup, you know, barring, you know, I mean, Caprizo, I'm sure they don't want Caprizo to be their blocking shots. Let's be perfectly honest, but but you know what I mean in that sense, when you yeah. got a rookie coming in and just showing that like, I will do what it takes to win off the bat. That's amazing. And who's in no stranger to that. Even in the KHL, man, he was blocking shots. I mean, even Hoppy and Z talked about, I think it was last year, how he like dove in front of a puck and took one to the face, right, the missing beat. teeth and all, and came back like for the next game. It was it was it was unbelievable. So this kid's got a motor, and and you said it. I I do want to see him up, you know, up in the top six with some playmakers. But I'm I'm okay with where he was slated in that first game against the Anaheim Ducks, and obviously he's going to get more of an opportunity to play in that game because it is the Anaheim Ducks. It's not the St. Louis Blues. The Wild weren't chasing in the Anaheim Ducks game, right? They they were you know they won two zero. They were pretty much comfortable in in most cases in that game. Um, so next to Freddie Goudreau, who's a, a pretty good skater, like Freddie, Freddie Goudreau is not the fastest skater, but like, he's got some wheels. They're definitely faster than Marcus Foligno. I definitely saw that there was some, you know, there was some balance there anyways, as far as the, the new chemistry on that line. And he looked comfortable. What did we yeah. say on locked on wild? What did we say on the last soda pot episode? We predicted that he would come in and just look comfortable, and he did, man. From no bucket in opening uh, in warmups, <laughs> right? I mean, right off, yeah. right when he skated out with no bucket, I'm like, oh, this guy's already like, yeah, yeah, I've been in the NHL, been there, done that sort of thing, even though he was stepping on NHL ice for the first time. And not only did he block shots, did he play physical, did he do pretty much everything right other than score in that first game? He also went six for nine in the faceoff dot. I mean, yeah, the book is still out on him if he's a true center in the National Hockey League. But in game one, when you do that, I mean, that surely shows that, okay, you have something that a center needs, right? Or at the very least, not to mention his playmaking ability and vision on the ice. So I, I thought he had a tremendous game. And if he was, if he was able even to get one point, it would have been like icing on the, uh, or sorry, cherry on top. But like still, I think it was, it was overall a tremendous performance by him. And uh, yeah, I think this is a great addition to the Minnesota wild roster. And imagine when it comes back him in the, yeah. and if he stays in the bottom six, how much of a threat that that will be even just shutting some players down as he was, he had some good takeaways, uh, in that game as well. Yeah, he he played really solid and sound defensively too. And you know, I uh, the key point here I think or one point that is important to consider is that this coaching staff is not going to try to overload him right off the bat. And so as much as we would like to see top 6 minutes from Marat right now, they're going to they're going to ease him in. Because you have Marco Rossi, because you have 
Jewel Erickson Eck, because you have Ryan Hartman filling in as the top line center right now. Like they're going to ease him in and allow him the opportunity to just kind of get acclimated to NHL life. I think there's a big opportunity for him too, as this season unfolds and maybe into next year too, for some penalty kill time. I oh, think 100%, 100%. The, fact that, the fact that that penalty kill unit is currently deploying Jake Lucchini as their one of their second line penalty killing forwards. I think that spot, once he's ready for it, which hopefully is sooner than later, I think once he's ready for that extra duty, I think that spot has Murat, who's Nadinov, written all over it. Like he just, he, he would be similar to what you got with Brandon Duhame, just physical and fast. And, you know, that can lead to transition opportunities and scoring uh, uh, shorthanded. I, I think he would be a perfect fit there too. Dude, he's going to be an absolute star for this team. He's gonna yeah. and whether and whether he becomes like a point per game player or a true top center or not, he's gonna be a fan favorite. Like a, and no offense to all you in Russia, he's not your typical northern Russian looking guy. I mean, look at this cat. Look at it. He looks like freaking Johnny Depp out there. So he's already got all the girls' heart. I swear, right? His English is already pretty good, Seth. Right? Like, yeah. like he's already joking around and and. And he hasn't even been living in the United States for more than a few days. I loved how I, I just love how he has a sense of humor with limited English already. And how um, Je when Jesse Pierce asked him about uh, Kirill Kaprizov, in addition to all like the the great things he had to say about his play and how much of an inspiration he is, I love how he was like, "Oh yes, free taxi to ring, free taxi to ring." Like <laughs> what a beauty! And not only that, him talking about how the crowd was cheering him every time he won a faceoff, and we'll play that clip now, was just epic. It's crazy <laughs> uh, to faceoff. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> what I love an that absolute clip. beauty. I love that clip so much. Like yep. that's that's confidence right there as a young player. And you can like it's not this isn't a knock. I said this, I, I said this after who's Nadinov debut. This isn't a knock on other rookies who come in and you know they're trying to they're trying to just fit in. They're trying to fill a role, they're trying to fit in, they're trying to not make waves. Like I, I love the fact that he just has shown this this level of confidence in the early part of his uh, NHL career. Uh that that I think just it's just another example of the fact that his trajectory is trending more towards being a dependable, like middle six guy, you know, with upside to be like a second line, second line center, second line wing. I, I think every, everything that we see in just the short sample size so far is, uh, is just leading us up that path. Absolutely. Um, I don't really have much else to talk about on Marat. I mean, I, I, I think we've been swooning enough. Like I said, the girls be swooning. I'm swooning <laughs> over his play. Uh, I just can't wait to see how this kid develops, man, because so far, so good. And confidence is key. And he fits right in. So, um, again, a, with the negative of Eric Sinek being out for a little bit, comes a positive of... At least comes a positive of Murat being able to slide right in there, get some minutes, and when Ek comes back, I'm interested to see how the Minnesota Wild deploy him in the latter part of this season. Uh, speaking yes. of Russian hockey players, Seth, first of all, <laughs> Brett, <laughs> the greatest Minnesota Wild prospect that we have in our system right now, Vladislav Firstov, the Yukon stud who went and was playing in Novgorod Torpedo is back, ladies and gentlemen. That is right. Vladislav Firstov, who gave a big fuck you to Iowa on his way out <laughs> after one game of getting limited minutes earlier this year, in, in the start of this season, by the way, has put together a hell of a performance in the KHL. Sorry, that was last year. I'm, I'm a year... Uh, late there, but yeah, so in 2022-2023 played a total of one game with the Iowa Wild in that year. He played eight eight games the year prior uh, coming 
out of the NCAA and the University of Connecticut. But in 2022, 2023, played one game, got limited minutes, and was quite frankly like, fuck this. He said, that's uh, it. I, I, I can't do that's it. That's it. Shout out to Billy Guerin, who didn't take that personally, didn't let that like hockey ego get involved there and said, you know what? Instead of just cutting ties from this guy, right? They went, you know yeah. what? Fine. Go to Russia then. Go to Russia. Go play there. And if you crash and burn, then you know what? Fucking a toe to so. But if you if you're if you're good, then maybe we can rekindle this relationship down the road. And I'm hoping, Seth, that that is what's happening right now. Uh, last year in the KHL in 47 games, he put 11 goals up in 26 points. This year, an impressive 17 goals in 67 games for 35 points. Plus player both years and actually has had playoff experience. 15 games total in his two KHL seasons. He played five games this year where he scored two goals and he got four points last year where he put up three goals and one assist in 10 games. It was funny because I was reading a Hockey News article that was just like, that didn't mention any of the tension between him and Billy Guerin. It was just like, yeah, after limited minutes, the the wild organization and him decided that he needed more time in Russia. And I was just like, oh yeah, that that's, uh, that's what happened there. That's what happened there. But he's back. He's going to be given another chance in the AHL. Um, what do you think this guy's future is in the Minnesota wild organization, Seth? And do you think Iowa deploys him properly this year, given that there's not much down there? And they're not really competing for anything at this point. I I think, I mean, I would hope that, uh, that he gets a fair shake in Iowa this time. And uh, it, it's an Iowa wild roster. They're near the bottom of the league in many different categories. And so I think at the least, I think at the minimum, it provides them an opportunity to get a different look at somebody and just see like... Iowa should at this point be just trying to determine who who's going to stick. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know they have dealt with a ton of roster moves because of the injuries that the wild have dealt with this season. But that's just, such a good point because the last couple of years when they had a lot of success, mind you with more prospects, yeah. there was chemistry and consistency where this year it's just been, it's just been nuts. Yeah, it's it, it, whatever happens with the NHL team, it seems definitely permeates through the the uh, the lower levels, too. And so there is, you know, there's some of that that they've dealt with pretty much all season. I, I think, honestly, the hope for Bill Guerin is that this is just another opportunity for somebody that can come in and be maybe a, a third line or a second line guy. The more opportunities, the more prospects you have that can potentially fill those roles, better chance you have of not having to necessarily go outside the organization to fill spots. And not all of them are going to pan out. But if Murad, who's Nadinov, continues to uh, to impress so far, that's one spot filled. If Danil Yurov comes over here and he takes a spot, that's another spot filled. You've got, like, ultimately, if this team is in its full contention window... Your fourth line is going to be probably Ryan Hartman, Marcus Foligno, and somebody else. So if you can get some of these prospects to step up and fill third line minutes, fill second line minutes, that's you're 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 wheeling and dealing. Absolutely. And and for those listening, he ain't no Hovanov. He didn't develop in the QMJHL the most pansy ass league in Canada, ladies and gentlemen, he <laughs> developed in Waterloo in the USHL in his first junior year. Right. And then went to call and played college hockey. So he's played in North America more than he's freaking played at a high level in Russia, which is awesome. That is amazing. Goes to Russia to play against better competition and now can come back where he's already used to playing here, right? So talk about being comfortable, right? When we were talking about Murat being comfortable, and I do rate Murat as a better prospect. Uh, in all seriousness, I do, even though, first of all, first <laughs> first, first prospect, let's go. I'm sorry, Brett and our boys that sound the foghorn. I know I mess up all your stats, but it's hilarious. Um, and at the University of Yukon, actually, uh, one of my friends uh, who played in the BCHL, he didn't play for the Nanaimo team. He played for Powell River in the BCHL. He was actually an assistant captain and captain for the University of Connecticut 
uh, for two of first off's years. And I reached out to him when he was playing with him. And he had nothing but good things to say about him. His work ethic, how he works with, and his English wasn't the greatest at that time, but he's like, he, he would stay with the staff after practice, work on certain things. Um, obviously like the Minnesota wild were in the ear of the, the NCAA's coaches a little bit and like, you know, getting updates and okay, we want him to work on this and this and that, but he was responsive to it. And, uh, and, and Carter would actually stay with him in practice. And I think he was a couple years older than him. So kind of took him under the wing as a, you know, as a mentorship role for, for that first season anyways. And again, just had nothing but good things to say about him on and off the ice. So that just shows that like, despite him being a little bit of a firecracker and, uh, <laughs> piecing out of Iowa due to not having enough ice time that, uh, he's passionate about the game and, and he wants to win. Right. Well, and I feel like Billy Guerin will respect that, especially if he starts showing that and is given more opportunity uh, in Iowa. Well, and here, this is the other important point that I struggle with sometimes because we just assume that because players get to the NHL level or because they get to, you know, higher levels than playing collegially, we assume that they've got everything all figured out. The thing that we have to realize is that these are 21, 22 year old kids. Like, think back yep. to where you were at at that point. I didn't have any, everything figured out when I was 21. I didn't have everything figured out when I was 22. Like it just sometimes takes players a little longer to kind of have that light bulb moment of like, Hey, I need to do this or I need to do this. Like yep. uh, I, any, any number of players at that point in their career have probably done things where they're like, yeah, it probably wasn't a great choice. It's well, all about learning from it and moving forward. Life oh, is learning. Totally life is learning is the the key thing to take away. Well, and you, you hit the nail on the head as, as far as just like develop developing as a young man, as, as a human, right. And a, and a member of, you know, whatever society that, that you reside in. But furthermore, like the college game, I'm sorry. It's, it's great for the high level competition, but for it being like a similar schedule to the national hockey league, it, it's not, it's a completely different yeah. beast. So those players, and that's why I have like the, like, that's why I, love Brock Faber so much because he came out of that college schedule and is now just seamlessly taking on a role as a full-time National Hockey League player playing insane minutes and a rigorous schedule. You know, at this point, like triple the amount of time that he's been on the ice in college, more practices, more grueling minutes playing against way better competition. So that's why I hold him to such a high regard because he didn't develop in Canada where again, maybe and I will say in you know some of these junior leagues and even in some CHL uh, leagues, uh, Quebec league, it's the talent. The talent's not as good as the NCAA, but at least you have that similar schedule. Hell, even in the USHL, how many games he played? They're like 60 some games, right? Yeah. Versus college hockey, which is a little bit different. This kid has experienced it all. Junior A, college, and now the KHL. Dude, he... He has all the, the tools to succeed. I'm just hoping that he jives well with that staff. I'm hoping that they give him the opportunity to make some mistakes in the beginning and then just get right back into it because, yeah, he could be something special. Yeah, it's, it is just it's something that Bill Guerin values. He values yeah. pedigree. He values experience. He wants, all of these, he wants all these players to have come into the system with experience at the postseason at the various levels, especially in the KHL. He values all that because it's going to be something that I think it's something, to be honest, that Chuck Fletcher kind of swung and missed that is you just you had all these guys that get accustomed to making the playoffs. And that's just like that's as far as they get. Bill Guerin's trying to get as much like postseason pedigree as he can with these prospects. So that when they get to the NHL, they have some level of familiarity with, hey, you got to just step up and make a play. When when it gets to be crunch time in these games, you got to just make a play. And so this this is a perfect example of not overreacting to this this situation with first off by Bill Guerin of just saying, we're going to be patient. The roster is pretty set as it is right now. So we're going to we'll let him do his thing when he's ready. He can come back and, you know, I I hope he I hope he has a productive end to the season. And whether he's in Iowa next year, whether we see him at the NHL level, 
uh, next year. I, I just, I, I hope this is kind of that. All right. I, uh, I, I did my little temper tantrum and, uh, now I'm ready to, uh, to come back. Yep. Um, I'm just going to play a quick clip because it's only like a minute, minute 20 here of Z and Hoppy on Judd's Buds. By the way, Judd's Buds live on the Soda Pod YouTube channel every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Seth and I were mucking it up in the live chat there last week. What That one was buzzing. And of course, Marat comes to town. Everyone wants to hear Z's uh, and Hoppy's uh, take on that. So that was a really fun chat. I mean, the chat's always buzzing. And if you want to be part of the show, join us live there as Hoppy and are totally interactive and yeah you get to experience the uh, Judd's Bud show live on Wednesdays and if you just want to listen to it via podcast you can find it drop every Friday wherever you get your podcast from but this was a clip from a podcast episode that dropped uh, six months ago so at the beginning of the season that was simply titled what happened to <laughs> <laughs> Vladislav first off check it out the guy that potentially will never put on a Minnesota Wild sweater. Vlad first off is lighting it up. He like he played really well last year. He was like half a point per game in the KHL. He's got points in both games for Torpedo this year. Uh they beat Loco and they beat Ska. Two very good teams in the KHL. He's got a goal and an assist. Like he's all over the ice. He's a beast. So I'm curious. He's like if he just like stays in the KHL forever. But like it's so crazy that he played one game the HL goes, fuck this. I'm going back to Russia. And this that is lights like, it this up. This is all just Isha jerk off fuel. Like that oh, gosh, like, this whole episode. He ain't wrong. Like, that's probably what he'll call it. Like <laughs> Yeah, probably. That's, the that's be like YouTube, talk, yeah. First of yeah. then, it's it's too much. Um but yeah, no, it's so I mean again, who's it up? Interesting start just with what happened last year, how he lit it up and was like their first line center. Um, it was like 20 minutes a night. And now the first couple of games this year, he's been paired with Mitch Cove quite often. He's playing on the wing, not really playing a whole lot of center, not getting a ton of shifts or like significantly fewer shifts than he was last year. Three games in, I'm not going to like freak out one way or the other, but I just thought it was weird and interesting. Sure. Um, but yeah, you're all lighting up first off playing great. See what happens. If you ever you sure you didn't play. miss him just eating a fucking shot with like 10 minutes left in the second <laughs> yeah. period in a game they're up for a rep? Yeah. Right. Maybe, maybe that was it. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> for, my, for more clips of Judd's Buds live streams podcast, as well as the full episode of the Soda Pod, where you can experience the Hoppy Hour segment visually, which is the better experience for it. Again, subscribe to the Soda Pod YouTube channel. It's uh it's it's a vibe, right, Seth? It's a vibe. It is very much a vibe. And I like you you just gotta be there. Like that's 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 the only way that I can really do it justice is you just you gotta be part of it. All right, let's talk. Um, I mean, that's all I got for Minnesota Wild talk, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I don't think there is any more news unless we're grasping for straws like uh like some of these wilderness articles I've seen lately come out. <laughs> Um, I will say at least the last I had heard, uh, by the time everybody's listening to this, will the hope for the Minnesota wild is that Jewel Erickson act responds well to treatment, which I'm assuming is happening today. Yep. Um, it's possible that he joins the team for the, uh, the Cali swing, but there, it all hinges on how things go today. So we'll, uh, we'll all keep an eye on it. Hopefully he's able to uh, to make the trip, but if not, then uh, the hope is that he is ready to go for Saturday's game against the Blues. Hell yeah! All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's move on to some fun NHL stories. Like we we, <laughs> and there's two that I want to highlight right off the bat, set. And this one, I mean, as soon as I heard about this, I, I literally called Hoppy and I was like, "Did you hear about what happened here?" And he was like. <clears throat> Yep. He's like, I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yarmir Yager bobblehead night postponed as the Pittsburgh Penguins say their shipment of the bobbleheads were stolen. Judge Zolgad, you only need one, sir. You only need one. <laughs> Hoppy was uh, throwing jabs at Zolgad there being like, you know, Judd. Do you have an explanation for this? And he's like, I don't understand. I don't understand the joke. I don't have this bobblehead. What are you talking about? And then I, I right after I judd the bobbleheads. I, I'm not. I'm not reading this verbatim, but 
something along the line. His, re- his response was something along the lines of like, oh, I understand. <laughs> do we do we know where Mark Andre Fleury was when these bobbleheads went missing? Oh my god, that this is totally a Fleury prank. Dude, I didn't even think about that. That's that's why I'm here. That is the first thought that entered my head is this is some sort of elaborate Mark Andre Fleury prank on so, Yarmir Yager. Honestly, I'm I I I'm all in on that conspiracy now. Like, think I'm about it too. All in, all in on that conspiracy. What are what is a big enough prank for a player with the statue or the Dude. stature of Yarmir Yager? Dude, like Seth, you're not only on to something, like you hit the fucking nail on the head, dude. Oh my goodness. That's they're crazy. gonna pop so- up, they're gonna pop up, and there's gonna be like a custom flurry bobblehead mixed in with them, and there'll be some note that flurry has attached saying dude, uh you know you know be what more I think? careful with these next time. I think he the next time he goes on McAfee's show, he's literally gonna be sitting on a throne of them. <laughs> He'll just have one per. He'll just have one perched on each shoulder. Oh my god! So uh, yeah, the Pittsburgh the Pittsburgh Penguins learned that they were the victim of cargo theft after failing to receive the shipment as scheduled. The team worked with the manufacturer and transportation companies to alert the appropriate state and federal authorities, who are currently working to locate the cargo. They haven't even found them yet, Seth. Unreal. Uh, they were the Pittsburgh Penguins organization was quoted saying they were shocked to be the victim of cargo theft and were working closely with the local federal authorities and investigation, uh, said Pittsburgh president of business operations, Kevin Acklin. Now, everyone who had tickets to that game got a voucher for for getting a, a free bobblehead, um, whether they go to the game that it's postponed to or not, as they will be honoring Yarmir Yager for that one. But just what a crazy story there. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's either Mark on Jay flurry or freaking like, you know, pirates, you know, who <laughs> love their, you know, Stanley cup loser merch that they, you yeah. know, get on like the freaking seas off the shores of Africa. And they're just like, yeah, you know, fuck this. We're going to, we, we love the Pittsburgh penguins merch. We're going to steal all these Yarmir Yager bobbleheads. Cause he's that much of a legend. Maybe it was Kyle Dubas, and he said, "You'll get your oh, bobblehead when we start playing better." Oh my god! Um, I, I love too how the Penguins' social media team took an opportunity to create just some A plus content with Yager in the van. Like I got one of the up. bobbleheads saying, "Come on, let we're we're gonna go find them." Like, I just I love a well executed social media bit. Probably among the top like three things in my life right now. A properly executed social media bit by a team account. Flawless. This is so good. Buckle up, baby. Let's go find your friends. Ah! So good. God, he's such a legend, dude. Oh, I love that like- so much. So you know what that reminds me of? And now, I, honestly, given the context of everything, this one was better. But did you ever see the one with Timu Solani when he retired? I think this was like in 2014, I want to say. But then came like signed a con a one year contract like right after the summer, and the Ducks filmed like a little golf video with him. Do you remember that? Vaguely, I I've heard mention of it. I don't know if I've actually seen it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm like doing some googling on the fly here. I think I can find it. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Okay, we'll fire this up as well. Again, if you guys are listening to the podcast, you're getting the audio of this, but uh, hit us up on YouTube for the full episode as uh, you're getting a lot of visual content here today. But yeah, I remember I was at the gym like on the treadmill when this was like playing on like Sportsnet or something like this, and I was just killing myself laughing, Seth. Ah. <sighs> Ei voi olla totta. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so he's, for those listening on the pod, he's golfing right now and not having a good time. And this oh, one's going man, right man. in the water. <laughs> oh, no. I've hit that shot a thousand times in my life. Oh, Seth, I'm so bad at golf. When we went to the golf simulator, the one of the waitresses gave me a hockey stick. (laughs) 
<laughs> well executed bit, man. <laughs> to go in the pond to pick up his shit now. Thankfully, I've never done that. <laughs> Hi, Bob. It's Temo. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming back. Yeah, but this is it. This is my final one. Uh, obviously, this one a little bit longer, you know, more production there, but it, but it gave me that, that kind of vibe. That's so good. Like, oh, I, I just... Social media is an art. Oh, for sure. Well, that was in 2014. So, like, that was at like the beginning of yeah. the social media era. Yeah, of like really jumping on trends and getting stuff out like really, really quick versus we see a good video once a month from like a team or something like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's amazing. Oh, man. Uh, a couple more things here, Seth, and then we'll wrap up again. Shorter show this week, but it's been a fun one, honestly. This yeah. this, this has been good. Full of laughs, full of laughs, and I hope you guys are enjoying uh, it as well. Again, I appear on, uh, on Locked on Wild with Seth on his Friday episode, so check it out on YouTube and, uh, and or audio, wherever you get your podcasts from. And uh, don't forget to check us out on YouTube to see the full video of this. But uh, here's another funky story from this week. Uh, so Darren Pang, he does... Uh, rinkside reporting play-by-play -play for nhl Panger. network and and i believe uh nhl tnt now yes panger funny story uh, as he was doing a rangers and islanders game where panarin by mistake swipes his drink during the freaking broadcast and it was caught on video now the way that this article was written and the way that actually brendan burke reported on it is just hilarious in his own right in its own right so i i encourage you guys to go check out the tnt article i will share the the video here in a moment but on on uh, on sunday the new york rangers ford wasn't waiting until he got back to his spot on the bench to rehydrate instead he opted to uh, grab and sip out of nhl and tnt analyst darren pang's cup paying a cup of what appeared to be a sports drink next to him while covering the game from his familiar spot on the benches. And I just have to say, like, he's lucky it was a sports drink and not like a THC seltzer. I'm just saying that yeah. right now. Shout out to Lupulin. We had the, some Lupulin THC seltzers in the opening segment of this show. Um, Panarin, who, by the way, 93 points in 67 Jeez. games. I hate to say this, Seth, but the Rangers have been nothing short of tremendous this season. And it's Wagon. Because of him as well um so anyways apparently it had uh, you know a rangers logo on it and it was gatorade it was gatorade but uh, i'll share the video here seth because this is just one of those quirky moments in the nhl and panarin's kind of a weird quirky guy anyways so like i'm not surprised that uh, that he was involved in this uh situation one bit uh check it out guys let's take again see i'm doing the replay here Look, he's on my left Look. <laughs> oh jeez! <laughs> Thanks, Panger. <laughs> oh my goodness! That makes it even better because, like, it's very clearly not a Gatorade bottle. Like, it's oh, very yeah. clearly not one of the bottles that you just have on the bench. So he knew, like, he knew it wasn't his, and yet he still just goes for it. Well, and it's like he didn't even talk to Panger. He's like. Like he didn't like, even really say a word. He's like, thank you. So like, I mean, that's just the character that he is. And yeah. I love that. Like Pang and him have that relationship where he can, where he can go and do that kind of like, uh, Oh, who was it? Scott Oak and Ryan Reeves, right? Like their, their funny relationship where like whenever Reeves was doing like a tarps off interview, like he'd be like, Oh, so, uh, Scott Oak, like how much you bench in these days? You know, he'd like he'd rip on him for his like older physique. And you know, they just had like, they've been, they've been friends and they have, they've had that good relationship for a while. So it's just cool and heartwarming to see like, you know, players of Panarin stature, right? A superstar, one of the best players in the National Hockey League to again have no ego and you know just just want to play around with the broadcast and just make the experience for everyone there working just just a fun time. And his excuse by the way was well it said it had the New York Rangers logo on it so it thought it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> thought it was okay. You do a better Russian accent than me. I can only do one accent. It's George St. Pierre. Uh, I'm not impressed by your performance. I'm not impressed by your performance. <laughs> <laughs> 
I uh, I can just do what I imagine would be Kirill Kaprizov talking when uh, when the power play doesn't score. Power play shit. <laughs> shit. It's the best. That's the best Russian accent I can do. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, some interesting games throughout the weekend, guys. Some fun upsets as well. I would say this last weekend was just a great weekend for hockey. I mean, the Capitals look good against the Canucks. Um, we had the Canes come back against the Leafs. Montreal played a good game as well. Um, unfortunately, the Wild Colorado lost to the with, Blues. Edmonton, Colorado with that classic. Oh, such a fun game. So, so good. Man, yeah, if you guys missed any games from this last weekend, this is you're listening to this on Monday, go check them out. Like, your pick of the litter, pretty much every game that was on this weekend was awesome. And I know it was... It's tough to watch the Wild play the Blues anytime because, you know... There's there's a rivalry, especially amongst the fans there, right? There's a healthy rivalry. And the fact that the Wild had yeah. to play kind of catch up most of the game, like that one was a tough one. But the fact that they, hey, they got into overtime, they were able to at least get a point in the shootout. That's something. But hey, if you're a fan of the National Hockey League, great games all freaking weekend. And man, the Frozen Four is coming up soon on the NCAA side of things. I know March Madness on the basketball things. We're, all, we're knee deep in that as well. And then up in Canada, for those who care, and I know our boy Mateo is going to be watching Mem Cup and WHL, OHL, and CHL finals, not to mention the RBC Cup for Junior A. I mean, it is junior hockey and college hockey playoff time, ladies and gentlemen. And it's going to be amazing. Stay tuned uh, to the Soda Pod as well as Judd's Buds. Um, and always hit me up on Twitter at VI Sports Talk or hit us up at Soda Pod or just comment on any of the YouTube videos if you need a place to watch junior hockey in Canada. Just like it's hard to watch college hockey in Canada, it's in the United States. I know it's hard to watch Canadian junior hockey. I got you all. I got you all. Hit me up, some sc- subscribe, comment. I got a spot. Seth's pointing out. I got a place where you guys can watch it, and we'll we'll leave it at that. Isha's got your back. Isha's got your back. Said I helped so many people during the World Junior. We can't. We don't have any channel network. Where do you find it? I'm like, bro, I got you. Took me like, two Reddit searches, but I got you, bro. So we got the um, hookup. So very excited for just it, it's playoff hockey before playoff hockey. It's playoff hockey for the you know for the prospects, right? And for me, and I and I imagine for like Z as well. Like that's 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 what gets us you know really really excited. And then it's just uh, it's just an appetizer for the greatest tournament in sports with or without the minnesota wild with or without the canucks for me in it or without the the penguins for hoppy in it i still like i watch every single game right it, it's that amazing of a freaking tournament and playoffs it's the best playoffs in sports 100 yeah i i got two i got two additional monitors for my laptop for the sole reason of being able to watch multiple playoff games at once let's go look at that you're 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 almost more Canadian than me now, Seth. That's why we do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, last thing I want to do here before we close things out, and it's a little bit of a like a somber note, but we just wanted to sh- give our love, respect, and support to Marty St. Louis. He had to take a leave of absence indefinitely uh, from coaching the Montreal Canadiens due to some family issues. Now, I know uh, his his mother passed away, shoot, oh, like, almost 10 years ago, if not 10 years ago now, when he was still playing in the national hockey league. And, you know, he like dedicated his playoff run with the Rangers, you know, to her and, and, and that really like helped fuel his play there. I, I'm guessing, you know, the, the, there's some other fam, you know, there's probably some other issues with uncles, aunts, other parent or whatever, regardless, it hasn't been disclosed. And like Seth and I were talking before we were recording the show, it doesn't need to be disclosed. Yeah. He's got, family issues and we just want to be supportive here in the hockey hockey community so um whether you believe in this stuff or not we're sending good vibes love prayers support to the beauty that is martin saint louis and uh hope to see him back soon and hope uh hope everything's okay there with his yeah. family and all an all-timer amongst nhl circles the game is better with him in it and so uh best best wishes to him and uh however much time it takes get right that's that's the that's the big takeaway there is however much time it takes get yourself right absolutely absolutely um seth that's it that's it for the show here today um short but sweet a lot of fun really appreciate you jumping on and i cannot wait to jump on uh this next week on lockdown like i was telling you last week like doing these podcasts with you now like this is this is my favorite part of the week my favorite part of the week getting my notes together 
um, connecting with Seth every Sunday. And it was just a really cool change of pace to be like, to be the guest for once yeah. on a pod. Cause I run all these shows, you know, city life <laughs> on my YouTube channel, soda pod for over almost 400 episodes now. And it's, it's cool being on the other end of it. And I really want to say to everybody here, uh, Go support Seth if you, if you don't already. And uh, just a huge thank you, my man. Like, it's an honor that you are bringing me on your platform because I know, like, you just hit, what, the 2,500 milestone sub on YouTube and Locked On is doing incredible stuff right now. I mean, you're one of the biggest wild content creators right now. Everyone goes to you first for the news and everything right after uh, games and your thoughts on everything. So, again, just I feel honored that I'm now, you know, a small part of your show. But uh, a part of your show nonetheless, man. So just, again, long-winded as I am, but thank you very much. Uh, it was a blast last week, and, I'm, and now I look forward to that uh, You know, every Thursday when we record it, but uh, every Friday for the folks to listen to it. So thank you, man. Well, and it's very mutual. Like, I, you guys, you guys were the first, when I first dipped my toes into the, uh, the wide world of the NHL and the, uh, the content game, you guys were the first ones to uh, to say hi and to uh, to welcome me into it. So there's always going to be that link, and the fact that we now get the opportunity to uh, to bring things full circle here with these uh, these appearances, it's just great. Like it, it's just people. Wild fans have a ton of great shows to cover the Wild, whether it be Michael Russo, whether it be Jesse Pierce, Judd Zolgad. Sound the Foghorn, Wild on 7th. Joe uh, the, Smith now Joe with Smith. Fellowship of the Rink. It is, in my humble opinion, the strongest coverage yep. amongst the NHL. Yeah. There may be there may be some bigger heavy hitters for some of those, you know, West Coast, East Coast teams. Toronto, Montreal, yeah. Vancouver, but yeah. But in my humble opinion, the coverage here is the strongest. And so Wild the most fans. passionate, the most yes. passionate. Consider yourself, consider yourselves fortunate that you have as many shows as you do that cover this team as in depth as they do. It just it helps further enrich what we have here, which is why I think everybody's so passionate about wanting to see the ultimate goal reached. And uh, you know, we'll we'll get there someday. Someday, someday in our lifetime, Seth. Someday. <laughs> Um, well, that does it for this segment. Uh, before we sign off here, Seth, what do you got coming up this week? And uh, where can the folks find you? You can find Locked on Wild and all of its uh, all of our content offerings by uh, just searching Locked on Wild. You'll find us on social media, on YouTube. You can join the ever-growing Locked on Wild community. We will be diving into, of course, a big West Coast swing. For the Minnesota Wild here this week, uh, and we're uh, we got a couple of other surprises planned that uh, I'm trying to flesh out for later in the week. So stay tuned. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for that. He's been Seth. I am Isha. Find me at Vi Sports Suck. Fuck you, hackers! I got my Twitter. You can't get me. You took down one of our Soto Pod accounts. You ain't gonna take me down, bitch. Find me on Twitter at Vi Sports Suck. Check us out on YouTube at the Soto Pod. Check my second channel as well, the City Life Project. We got more than just combat sports stuff. We got a lot of vlogs from beer vlogs, some of them that we feature in our Hoppy Hour segments, extended vlogs of me putting around Minnesota this now spring and summer coming up. And uh, yeah, a big shout out to everyone who supports Seth and myself. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we got content dropping on the channel. Soda Pod, MNCAA, Fellowship of the Rinks. Wednesday, we do our live Judd's Buds stream on YouTube. Uh, and then Friday, we also have the audio of that drop as well. So wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching, we got content for you every single day on both the Locked On Network with Seth at Locked On Wild and the Soda Pod, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you for listening, and we will see you next week, Seth. That's it. That's the show, ladies and gentlemen. Last but not least, I just want to give a shout out to our friends at Better Edge. That's right. Legal betting in this great state of Minnesota. Now, it would be greater if we actually had legal betting, but Better Edge has your back in the meantime. Go check them out. BetterEdge.com slash SodaPod. Sign up upon going to that link to get 20 
dollar sign up bonus. That's right, to get twenty dollars to play around with. We also host Minnesota Wild game day pickums on that platform. Five dollar entry, pick seven out of ten points, money line, player point total, etc. More competitions to come from us there at the Soda Pod again. Better Edge, a free platform with legal betting in the great state of Minnesota, among 44 other states as well. And if you're loving the platform, if you've already burned through that $20 that you got from signing up at betteredge.com slash soda pod, you can check out Better Edge Premium. Premium players have access to free. Premium players have access to free entry to premium pick'em contests where you can win up to 100 bucks. Order grades, advanced order, filtering, API access, and more. More details at betteredge.com slash premium. But if you're just starting out, if you just want to dabble in and on this platform, you might as well do it with the free 20 bucks and sign up by going to betteredge.com slash soda pod. Better Edge, a proud partner of the soda pod. Like I said, guys, that's it for the show. Fun hoppy hour. Shout out to Joe and an even greater time talking hockey i promise we filmed the hockey bit before we dove into the thc seltzers because let's just say i had a wicked good sleep after that and that may or may not be the reason why this podcast is coming out late noted thc seltzers do them earlier in the day or at least not before you're gonna edit a podcast there's the psa for today Thank you to those tuning in on Google, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, and everyone who's been supporting us throughout these few years. Again, if you want the full experience of the Hoppy Hour, go check us out on YouTube as we post the full episode of the podcast every single week, every single Monday on our YouTube channel. Thank you all for supporting the Soda Pod, Fellowship of the Rinks, MNCAA, Judd's Buds, any or any one of those shows or all of those shows. We really appreciate every single one of you. Give us five stars and a kind review on any podcast app that you're listening to us on. And don't forget to comment on the videos that you watch on our YouTube channels. Like them. It really just helps YouTube push our videos. And by leaving a rating and review on the podcast side of thing, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeart, whatever you're using, it kind of does the same thing. It feeds, it feeds that algorithm and it helps get us in front of more listeners. So if you are coming back and watching us or listening to us, we really appreciate you. It takes just one second. Smash that like button on YouTube. Five stars on your podcast app. It just helps us grow. Signing off, I'm Isha Dromi alongside Joe, Seth. This has been the Soda Pod presented by Better Edge, 7th Avenue Pizza, Northland Vodka, and Waggle Golf. Don't fear, just drink some beer and stay wild.